Hello everyone, today we're out in my workshop to celebrate the first anniversary of the rcprinter.com YouTube channel. That's right, exactly one year ago on February 9th, 2021, we posted our first video of the OpenRC F1 car on YouTube and we've been building and filming 3D printed RC cars ever since. Now, because it's our first birthday, we have a special episode for you today. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick walk down memory lane and show you all of the vehicles that we've built so far. We're gonna zip quickly through each one of these. And we'll say a few quick words about each, what we liked, what we didn't like, what maybe could be improved, and what modifications we added to each vehicle. So stick around. Okay, so to start off here, we have this guy, which is the OpenRC F1 car. This is the first 3D printed RC car I ever built. And unless you have something specific in mind, I think this is probably a great one for you to get started with as well. Uh, the reason is it's just really easy to do. Uh, there aren't that many parts and it's fairly inexpensive as well. There's no complicated suspensions or anything like that. The gears themselves are 3D printed and you can get everything you need to put together this guy for about 50 bucks. Because it looks so cool, it's gonna make you happy that you built it. And if you want to, you don't even have to buy wheels. You can 3D print these ones. You can see here, I started off with these 3D printed wheels, but I ended up deciding to go for something a little more performance oriented. So I ended up with these F104 tires here, which are much stickier. Also at one point, I threw on these modifications to make it look more like a Mad Max car, but they didn't last too long. Now the benefit of the OpenRC F1 is also kind of its drawback. It is quite simple, but you're not gonna get that great a performance out of it if you're looking to drive it super hard just because there is no suspension and it is such an uncomplicated vehicle. So next up we have the Tarmo 4. Now this is a four wheel drive, full suspension, double wishbone, front open differential, takes a beating, drives like a beast, real basher of an RC car. First time I drove it, I was like, damn, this is what a real RC car should feel like. You can see it's uh, really quite beefy. It uses really thick components everywhere. The chassis itself is held together with four millimeter rod that goes right through the three chassis pieces. So it's super strong. Unfortunately, all that bulk does make it a quite heavy vehicle. And to compensate for that, it uses a brushless setup. So it's got a D3542 brushless motor and it uses a 120 amp ESC to control it. It's quite fast and it drives really well. It drives great on 2S, but it'll also go super fast on a 3S LiPo. Now, one of the things I really like about it that's also kind of a drawback is that it does use pretty much only 3D printed components. So um, on the inside here, we have drive shafts that are made out of TPU, front and rear. Uh, then we have these dog bones that are 3D printed. These diff cups are 3D printed. The differentials are 3D printed. Uh, the front is an open diff and it does use some metal Traxxas gears inside. So that's the only thing in the whole drivetrain that's not 3D printed. Because of the weight and because of the power, because of using all those 3D printed parts, you do tend to bust these drivetrain components quite a bit. And that is kind of one of the drawbacks of the vehicle is that it is prone to busting. One of the things you can do to help combat that is to make sure you use the right size tires just to reduce the strain on the drivetrains. So make sure you read the specs and you definitely get tires that are 100 millimeter or less in outside diameter and that you print all the parts with the specifications that are in the printing guide. All in all, this thing has a ton of promise. We haven't put build kits for it yet on our website, although they are coming. But the reason we haven't put them out is because the designer is actually currently working on a Tarmo 5, which is a complete redesign of the Tarmo 4. And he's actually turning it into a rear wheel drive vehicle instead of an all wheel drive. So it is gonna be quite a bit different. So when that comes out, we'll be able to have have build kits for the four and the five, depending on what you want to go for. And one of the other things I don't love about the design is that the bodies are just kind of an afterthought. This I think was actually designed by, by someone else and the rear wing as well is just way too large for it. Uh, you don't have to put those on, but you do want something in there to cover up your electronics. I kind of wish the designer had just spent a little bit extra time just to make sure it had a body. Next up we have Ski Ride, and as you can see we have two different 3D printed RC snowmobiles here, both Ski Ride. 
This one has uh, Polaris body panels, and this one has the Ski-Doo body panels. I believe you can also get the body in a uh, Yamaha style. And I mean, come on, it's an RC snowmobile. How cool is that? So I love the idea that I can 3D print a performance RC snowmobile that's gonna just destroy anything that you can get pretty much any store out there. Another one of the things I really love about Ski Ride is that the community is amazing. There's a huge community on Discord of people who are modding the snowmobiles and making them even better. The designer's original idea was to make something that was super easy to build and he definitely got that. It is not a huge task to build one of these snowmobiles. He did oversimplify a couple of things. The steering components and the front suspension would be my major gripes. But if you look online, there's tons of mods available for the ski ride that allow you to update those things if you want. So this is an original ski ride using the original steering arms here. This one has updated steering that uses three millimeter rod, so it's much stronger. This one also has a TPU track on it, so it's a flexible track that's gonna take a lot more abuse than a PLA track like this one has. This one has just a cheap set of shocks on it. This one has much nicer Traxxas shocks and they perform a lot better. This one has a cheap brushless kit in it, whereas this one has an upgraded brushless censored uh, 540 motor, 13.5T with a 120 amp uh, speed controller as well. So this one's definitely more my performance led. Now, I do have to say one of the drawbacks of a snowmobile is they don't actually turn all that well in the snow. So if you think of a real snowmobile on the hill, a lot of the turning actually comes from the rider's movement, moving their weight back and forth on the sled to make it do what they want. And you're not gonna get that with an RC snowmobile. So that's kind of a drawback. And also I've noticed that at high speed, it does tend to wobble a bit and bob back and forth. So that's a bit of a drawback there as well. But I don't think there's any other option for a better 3D printed snow doy than a ski ride snowmobile. All right, next we have the 3D Sets Rancer, and that's definitely one of my favorites, just because the design is just done so well. 3D Sets has just put in so much time and effort to make sure that they've made a design that is accessible so that anyone can build it and that is easy to print. So all of the pieces are easy to print without adding any supports and also super fun to drive. So originally this one had no top on it, just had a roll cage but I've since added the soft top upgrade and I've added the extreme pack with a winch on the front, little shorty fenders here so I have maximum clearance on it. But you can also choose to go with the original or you can go with a hard top. They also have a wagon version that's a four door and you can get it in a landy style too which is uh, like a Land Rover instead of the Jeep styling. The suspension on it is a solid axle so just like a truck it's got one axle that goes all the way through and that's held in place with a number of different suspension arms. Now originally these vehicles come brushed but I was actually able to upgrade this one with a brushless motor and that's gonna be coming out in the next little while as well, it would be brushless upgrades for uh, the Rancher. They're also coming out with an open differential upgrade so you can install that soon as well. The only negative I'd say about this thing is it is a bit of a big project to undertake. It takes a really long time to print all of the pieces just because there are so many. There are five to 600 different fasteners that go into one thing. So there's 30 bearings unless you're gonna to upgrade to the new brushless with the open differentials and then there's 40 bearings that you have to use to put this thing together. So it's not the kind of thing you're gonna be able to put together in just an afternoon. And because of that as well, it's not inexpensive to build. You are gonna to have to invest a bit of time and a bit of money to get something like this. All right, next we have the Koenigsegg Agera by designer Deprenized. This is definitely the most beautiful project that we've built. The designer was extremely ambitious and spent a ton of time and care trying to make an exact replica of the vehicle. It's got these super cool dihedral synchro helix doors that flip up like that. The front and rear hood both open. Uh, the top comes off. It's actually got calipers and rotors. They don't work, but you know, he's included those in the design there as well. So my gripe would be with this one though, that although it looks amazing, it doesn't drive great as an RC car. It is rear wheel drive and the rear drive components do seem to bust quite a bit. The steering's a bit flimsy. The tires themselves you have to print because you can't buy ones that'll fit off the shelf. And they're extremely slippery if you print them out of TPU. But I'm super happy with how it turned out and you know, I can throw a battery in it and drive it around if I want, <clears throat> but honestly, I just find it really cool having it sit there on the shelf. One other thing about this one is that there aren't really any instructions online. There's some pictures to follow if you go to deprenize.com, but this was never really meant as a commercial project. All 
right, so next we have the Open RC Tractor, and what can I say? It's a, it's a fun, fun toy to play with. It's a perfect scale tractor. It's got working lifter arms in the back with a power source, so you can power all your implements here and move them up and down. And if you had a sand pit or something like that to play in, it's a ton of fun and it's a ton of fun for kids as well. Another thing I really like about it is that it is just super cheap to build. It just uses a tiny little motor that's not really meant for RC or anything like that. So it doesn't go super fast, but it is quite inexpensive. So if you're just looking for a toy to play with, I would highly recommend the Open RC Tractor. A couple of the issues I had were just around getting the gears to mesh in the, in the in the rear and having to open up the gearbox for the open RC tractor is a bit of a task, so that's not too fun. But once I got them meshed in properly, I haven't had any other problems with that. And the other thing was it uses two servos to lift those arms in the back. You should be able to Y those servos and reverse one of them and have them both work off the same channel, but I was never able to get that to work, so I actually have them plugged into two different channels in my receiver. And then I just have those two channels tied together on my radio. All right, next we have this big beast here, which is the Ant Nash Humvee. It is by far the biggest RC car that we've built. It's actually a one to 8.5 scale. It's got some really awesome details on it, like these cool magnet clasps on the side that hold the, the front hood down. The drivetrain is actually not too bad to work on in this thing, because you can actually pop this entire whole body right off of the chassis. It's built like a tank, which is pretty awesome, and it's really sturdy. My biggest gripe with the Humvee, though, is that it is such a pain to print. The designer did a really great job of modeling everything, but he didn't do as good of a job at making sure all of the pieces were easily 3D printable. So I think when I printed it, I ended up using just as much support filament as I did, you know, filament for the actual pieces, which was kind of a shame. There are some minor issues, like the door clasps themselves don't hold very well. It's also a little bit slow. I'm using a 3D printed gearbox that he designed, but I believe you can do an upgrade to an off the shelf gearbox if you wanted, and then you could probably upgrade the motor strength as well. And one other thing about it as well is, is because it is so big, this thing is super heavy. And because of that heaviness, it does require some really heavy duty shocks. You know, the ones I've used here, I've had to put these little spacers in to try and crank those springs even tighter than they would normally go, but it still doesn't have a great suspension. All right, next we have this one, which is the MK Ultra, and this is definitely one of my favorites. It's an all-wheel drive racing buggy, and it's the closest thing that I've seen to a performance racing buggy that can be 3D printed. You might actually be able to take this thing to the track and compete with it. It's got sway bars, it's got uh, adjustable suspension, a decent amount of travel, I actually really love the body that comes with this, which is super flexible and you can just pop it on and off. And it does a really good job of keeping dirt and water on the outside and keeping all of your electrical components on the inside nice and clean. But as a trade-off, it is one of the more expensive 3D printable RC cars to build, just because it does use a bunch of specialty parts. So it uses Schumacher specific belts and it uses team associated gears. It uses these metal drive shafts here. And there's an option to use a 3D printed differential, but I've opted to go with the metal differentials as well, which I would highly recommend. So it's not cheap, but it performs great. And if you're looking for a really high performance 3D printed RC car, this is the one I'd recommend going with. The next prints and videos we did were on these two, which is not 3D printed RC cars at all. They're actually Nerf blasters and they're amazing and they're designed by a guy named Captain Slug. Look them up online. I'm not gonna say too much about them other than just to say you can customize them to look how you want. And if you're gonna 3D print one of them, I'd recommend this one, which is the Caliburn over something like that, which is called the Indra. But um, the Caliburn is just awesome. One drawback though of these is that they do shoot super fast. This one shoots like 200 feet per second. So they're not something I really want to use playing Nerf with my son just because I feel like I'm going to hurt him. 200 feet per second is like 130 miles an hour. So it's a toy, but it's not a toy, you know? Let's move on. All right, so the next one we have here is this guy, which is another 3D sets model. This is the buggy, obviously modeled after a Volkswagen bug. It uses a belt drive and a brushless outrunner motor, which works really well. And it's definitely by far the fastest of the 3D sets models that we've built so far. 
It's nowhere near as fast as the other buggies we've built, like the MK Ultra, but uh, you know, it does hold its own and you can get yourself into trouble with it. I would say it's definitely a crowd favorite when I show my RC cars off to people, everyone loves the bug. The main gripe I'd have with the buggy would just be the rear suspension. Um, unlike the front, which uses a double wishbone design, the rear one uses a single independent axle on each side, and it causes those rear wheels to camber and caster quite a bit as the rear suspension flexes. And one other thing I don't really love is the back windshield. If you touch it too hard, it does pop in, and it's just a bit of a pain to have to put it back in when it pops out. All right, next we have this guy, which is the Ursa. And this is the first monster truck we've built. This is actually made by the same guy that makes the MK Ultra, designer Tahusevet. Although this is one of his earlier designs and I have heard him say he would love to update it. I really love these giant wheels and he actually designed it so the front and rear wheels both turn. So there's a servo up front and a servo in the back. And that actually makes it really, really fun to drive. It's driven by a 540 motor and there's an open differential in the front and an open diff in the back. And I have I haven't actually had any issues with those 3D printed differential gears, which is nice. However, I have had a lot of issues with the gear that connects to those 3D differential gears. So I have had trouble getting this guy to be reliable. I think it needs a little bit of work to pull some of those gears closer together. And I really hope he finds time to update it soon. One other thing I've had a bit of trouble with is the steering. It uses these micro servos on the front and the rear. And I think for something this big, it would make sense to have standard side servos if possible. It kind of gets away with it because it's actually quite a light vehicle. It's just a lattice work frame, but it would be nice to have a bit of a bigger servo on there. This also is actually the first vehicle that we've print that uses rubber bands for the suspension. And you know, they work a bit, they're quite bouncy. Um, so if you're actually wanting some dampening, you're not gonna get that out of it, but it does make it very cheap to build. And last but not least, we have this RC tank by designer Andre Klaus. This is the most recent design that we've printed, and it is also super fun to drive and climbs over pretty much anything. One of the things that was kind of neat for me on this was learning about how to set up the mixing on a dual stick controller. It took me a little bit of time to get it right, but now it, it runs perfectly. It uses two separate motors, each with their own speed controller, and you have a choice of different motors to use. The designer himself, when he was building it, used a couple of brushless outrunner quadcopter motors. And so that was a bit different than what I used, which was two 540 motors. And I couldn't find any information online about what 540 motors to use. So I just used some 27T ones I found lying around. And it works really well and it is super fast, but those motors get extremely hot very quick. So I think I might need to tone them down a little bit and maybe go for something like a 35T. So if you're looking at building one of these, you should check that out as well. So far, my only gripe with this thing other than the heat would be that these track tensioners here, they don't stay super well. It would be nice if they had some teeth on them or something so that they kind of locked into place. But other than that, it seems to run perfectly. So that's it. That's everything we accomplished so far in our first year at rcprinter.com. I'm really looking forward to another amazing year through the rest of 2022 and into 2023. We've actually already printed our next two models here so you can take a guess as to what those are gonna be. So make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified when those next videos come out. So before I sign off, I just wanna say a quick thank you to a, a few of the people who've made our first year complete success. First off, to the designers of all these awesome RC car projects, I just want to say thanks. You've all outdone yourselves here and each model is unique in their own way. Some of you I've worked quite closely with in building these RC models, so thank you so much for all your help as I troubleshooted my way through them. Also, thanks to all you viewers for watching and helping us get over the thousand subscriber count last month. That was really cool to see. And thanks to everyone who commented with very kind words or suggestions to help me out. I really appreciate it. And as always, let me sign off by saying, if you're looking for ideas of 3D printed projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out at rcprinter.com.